Hey everybody, Dr. Nickel here, here with another sleep tip. So happy hump day. Um, so uh, kind of piggybacking off of the last time we talked, which was about um, sugars and how that affects our sleep. Um, another thing that is a factor is eating a large meal prior to bed. So um, as you may have already experienced, if you eat a large meal and then go straight to laying down, you may experience more reflux um, or heartburn and difficulty sleeping. And that is um, actually an association. So um, a reflux is when we have um, food in our stomach and some of it sort of backflows back up into the tube between our mouth and our stomach called the esophagus. And we do have a valve in there that's supposed to keep things down into the stomach, but um, we often are upright and let gravity help us. And with um, laying horizontal, we end up having some backflow. We don't have the advantage of gravity and the valve sometimes, especially with age, doesn't work as well. And then some kind of gets back up and that's reflux. Um, and heartburn is similar. Um, it's where you get that burning sensation in the chest, um, often after a very large meal. So the problem with a very large meal before bed um, are both of those things. Obviously, also, if you've ever overeaten, which I'm sure we all have at some point in our life, um, you get that uncomfortable feeling, which is going to make it harder to go to sleep. Um, and you can get kind of nauseous where you feel like, oh, I ate too much. And then it's really hard to fall asleep when you feel like that. So all of these things um, will impede your ability to fall asleep. Also, another factor is that if it's too close to sleep, your body has had no time to digest or very little time to digest the food that you've consumed, which then means that when you're trying to sleep, the body's focused on two different things. It's still trying to digest the food that it just got um, or still work on it. Um, depending on if it's a large meal, it's obviously going to take longer to break down. So it's still trying to focus on that while you're trying to go to sleep and get it to focus on something else, which can, can end up being some competing priorities and it will delay being able to fall asleep. Another factor is even though you may end up having um, a longer sleep time, but then finally get to sleep, um, you may end up having the, the reflux or heartburn or nausea may give you either micro arousals during your sleep or um, cause you to wake up, but you don't remember that in the morning or even just bring you from a, lot, a deeper stage of sleep to a lighter stage of sleep. Um, and you wouldn't necessarily remember that, but it's going to affect your quality of sleep and how refreshed you're going to feel in the morning. It interrupts how you, you interrupts you getting into deep sleep and staying there um, when you get reflux or you know indigestion or something that is affecting you, even if you aren't realizing it. Um, physiologically, it um, bumps you out of a deep sleep um, based off like train pain triggers. Um, and that sort of thing. So it can end up being um, affect your sleep quality and a less restorative sleep. So really the recommendation is to have at least two hours, three would be better for ideal, before bed, hours before bed. Um, of eating. Now, some of it will matter um, how large your meal is. Like if you didn't eat a really big meal, then you may be able to get by with just like two hours of sleep. If it's a really large meal, two hours may not be enough time to have digested everything that you ate, especially if it has a lot of like fiber or fat in it, that's going to take longer to break down than if it was like a really big bowl of soup or something. So some of it will kind of depend on what it was, but, um, you know, really you should give it anything less than two hours. You're really probably going to affect your sleep latency that we talked about last time, how long it takes you to fall asleep. Um, and probably even once you get to sleep, it's going to affect your sleep quality. Um, 
so I know that this is sort of contrary to a lot of like our society's um, way of doing things nowadays. I mean, we're often very busy during the day um, and it's sort of become a little bit more of the norm to sort of skimp or um, rush meals during the day and then make up for it at the end of the day with a big meal for dinner time before bed. But really this isn't the best policy, one for your waistline, but also for your sleep. So, you know, when the saying is the breakfast is the most important meal of the day, there is some truth to that. If you front load your calories, then you have a better chance of using your calories efficiently, not storing them so much on your body. Um, because if you eat a big meal and go straight to bed, there's nothing left to do. So it just will pack it away for a rainy day. Um, at, whereas if you front load it, it, you can kind of burn some stuff off during the day. And also, if you um, are eating a heavy meal at the end of the day, um, you know, it ends up effect <clears throat> affecting the next day um, in terms of daytime functioning. So that is the, the big one. Um, you know, try to get your meals at least two hours away from your sleep and smaller is generally better. So eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. Okay, I'll see you next time.